sons of God or children of God but as friends of God after Christ's death, burial and resurrection then I'm obliged to believe that okay. um, the final thing would be lesson 13 on page 50, 55 how mm -hmm. false religion misrepresents God mm -hmm. um, I've talked a lot do you want to read paragraph 2 or shall I read it yeah, you'll have to read it because yeah. you know, it's all on my phone. So. Okay. False religion does not treat people as Jehovah does. The Bible says that false religion's sins have massed together clear up to heaven. For centuries, religions have meddled in politics, supported wars, and caused or approved the death of countless numbers of people. Some religious leaders enjoy a lavish lifestyle and demand money from their followers to pay for it. These actions prove they do not even know God, yet alone have the right to represent him clearly is stating here unless i've misunderstood it that any religion that's involved in politics or, or warfare um is a false religion which jehovah has nothing to do with yes but the watchtower bible and tract society of new york joined the united nations in 1992 your then yeah. governing body member lloyd barry signed you into un membership in 1991 and you yeah. accepted the next year taking out NGO membership of the United Nations. NGO means non-governmental organization. Your literature at the time said the UN was of the devil. It was one of the wild beasts of the, one of the beasts of the book of Revelation. It was satanic. Um, the Guardian newspaper exposed this as hypocrisy on the 8th of October, 2001. And you resigned from the UN the next day. I've got a letter from Paul Hoffiel, who's a UN section leader for the NGO section. And he had to send out thousands of copies of a form letter explaining why the Watchtower were members of the UN from, 2000, from 1992 until the 9th of October 2001, when you resigned on that day. Um, the Watchtower has never taken Paul Hoffiel or the UN to court for slander or defamation of character or libel. Um, the Guardian article, which accused the Watchtower of utter hypocrisy, uh, you've never taken the Guardian to court, sued them for libel. Um, why did the Watchtower join the UN in 1992? I'm not aware that it ever did join the uh, UN in 1992. It's not something I've ever heard of. So you're the first person to ever tell me that. Right. Would you like me to read Paul Hoffiel's letter to you? It is brief. Well, not really, because I don't even know who Paul Hoffiel is. He is the section leader of the United Nations in charge of the NGO section. And he states in his To Whom It May Concern letter that the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York were in association with the United Nations from 1992 to 2001. Okay, well, I can look into that. So it's not something I've ever come across before. And yes. I've, I've been a Jehovah's Witness for all of my life, 50 years. There so, seem to be, um, yes, there, there seem to be lots of connections between the Watchtower and warfare and politics. Yeah, so I would disagree with all of that. Um, we have a lot of people that are used to be witnesses and they're quite happy to uh, throw mud at something that has no formation or no basis whatsoever. I have never been a Jehovah's Witness. I was an evangelical Christian. I'm not saying Christian. you have. I'm, um, I'm just saying there are pro a lot of people out there yeah. that are always looking for opportunities to defame uh, the witnesses. We we don't take it. We don't go to defamation of character. It's not what we do. Oh yes, you do. Yes, you do. You you take people to court at the drop of a hat. Um, there was a guy on YouTube, not his real name. He went by the name of Kevin McFree. And he had Lego. And he made a little town that he called Dubtown. And um, he had um, a kingdom hall that he built out of Lego and little characters that he moved around using stop motion photography. Have you seen Wallace and Gromit? Yes. Well, Wallace and Gromit are made out of plasticine. He did the same thing as Wallace and Gromit, but with Lego. And he was taken to court in America. It's just been thrown out of court last week in America. So the Watchtower. So who, who, who took him to court? The Watchtower, Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York. They would have only ever done anything like that if it was on a trademark. Uh, you will know from if you've done this sort of research, that everything that's published has got trademark. Um, uh, he, I don't know what they call the, it. He he used Lego. 
He moved yes. Lego As characters said, if, around. If, 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 he, if they've gone against the trademark... He did, there's no over. trademark on... It's there's no, Lego, there's Lego nothing... Entity. No. The Watchtower took him to court because they wanted to find out his real name, which they, which they found out, and which other people have now, unfortunately, blabbed on YouTube. Um, but they took him to court. For, for producing little Lego characters and little Lego uh, videos about Lego pieces moving around. Um, and the, the Watchtower took this guy to court. Same um, sight. So please don't, because the Watchtower is very litigious. They will, they will take anyone to court at the drop of a hat. They've got billions. They've got whole floors full of lawyers at their um, Chelmsford he headquarters. Um, I know that because they took me to court last year. The case was thrown out of Plymouth Crown Court on the 13th of August um, last year, 2021. Um, that was following complaints from two elders, one at Launceston Kingdom Hall in Cornwall and the other was Tiverton Kingdom Hall in East Devon. Um, and I, I had to go to court repeatedly for the pre-trial briefings. And then at the end, when my defence team produced um, a letter, well, a report from an expert witness, the 13-page statement, I think it was, um, that queried certain of the charges against me, the judge threw the case out. But that was uh, charges taken against me by Jehovah's Witnesses. Jehovah's Witnesses are notorious for taking people to court at the drop of a hat. Um, the other thing is the Watchtower received share dividends from arms companies through the Henrietta M. Riley Trust. She was a woman who died in 1945. She um, uh, stated in her will that all her assets be liquidated, turned into an independent trust, so it's not owned by anyone. It's not owned by the Watchtower. It is independent, the Henrietta M. Riley Trust. And it's just a portfolio of shares, which is run for a large fee by Detroit Bank. And the bank, for its fee, not only runs the trust, it also produces annual reports for the American tax authorities, known as the IRS. So that's how you can find about the Henry, Henrietta M. Riley Trust. You just go to the American tax authorities. And um, the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York has been receiving share dividends from the Henrietta M. Riley Trust since 1945. I've got about 15 years of accounts and all of those accounts mention share dividends from arms companies such as Northrop Grumman that makes the B-2 bomber, Boeing and Honeywell. Now the Watchtower, if it really was God's organisation, surely they'd say uh, Henrietta M. Riley Trust run by this Detroit bank, we reject your money. We don't want your money because Jehovah appointed us in 1919 and we represent Jehovah God. We have no involvement in warfare. We are pure. We're a pure organisation that keeps out of the affairs of this world. But no, every year they accept between half a million and three quarters of a million dollars from the Henrietta M. Riley Trust, knowing full well that some of that money comes from arms companies. I mean, come on, that's total hypocrisy. Can I ask a question? What is the point of this call? Um, well, I've been speaking to various Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, asking them questions about their religion, and I haven't had answers. I, I, um, yeah, but you haven't answered my question. What is the point of the call? What, um, what, are, you, what are you trying to do here? Well, the, the point of the call is I record these calls and stick them on YouTube. This call will be um, 1,510, I think, somewhere around that, certainly over 1,500. And by speaking to Jehovah's Witness elders from across the whole of the UK, I demonstrate that Jehovah's Witness elders don't even know Jehovah's Witness doctrine. They don't know the teachings of the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, and they most certainly cannot defend them. I just say, so you still haven't answered my question. What is the point of the call? What are you trying to prove yeah. here? It demonstrates that you cannot defend your religion, the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. You can talk to me on the phone, but you can't defend it. I'm not looking to defend it. It's, it, it's my well, it, faith. It can't be you defended. You have the same conversations with the Roman Catholics and the 
uh, Buddhists and everybody else? Do you do, um, do the same I, thing with them? I did phone up a Roman Catholic priest because somebody said, why don't you do that to the Catholics? So I phoned up a Roman Catholic priest two or three years ago at a cathedral. I think it was Coventry or Leicester Cathedral. I asked him about the number one Catholic doctrine, apostolic succession. I had to explain it to him. He didn't even understand the Catholic doctrine of apostolic succession. I'm a former oneness Pentecostal. I have about a hundred recordings with oneness Pentecostal leaders. I have about 50 recordings of um, people in the RCCG and Winners Chapel, which are Nigerian churches, the leaders of whom have private jets, multiple private jets. Uh, and mansions. So I asked them about their policy on compulsory tithing, giving 10% of your, of your income to these two groups. I've had dialogues with Mormons, Christadelphians, Scientologists. Um, evangelical Christians are very reluctant to speak. Um, they want, <laughs> um, but mostly Jehovah's, mostly Jehovah's Witnesses. I go to jw.org. I go to find find a meeting on jw.org, and there's the phone number. And I'm trying to get every single kingdom hall in the country. I've so far, um, I'm so far, my number of videos is up to, I think, 1,510, including you. But this proves, you see, when people hear the conversations between myself and a Jehovah's Witness elder, I'm not a professor. I'm just an ordinary overweight guy, boarding overweight, 61 years old. Um, I'm nothing special. I'm unemployed. Um, but I do voluntary work for a charity here in Plymouth where I live and when I speak to Jehovah's Witness elders it's just amazing to hear hundreds and hundreds of telephone calls with Jehovah's Witness elders who are absolutely completely incapable of defending and proving the claims of the Watchtower. I'm not looking to defend them my belief is in the Bible so um you know, you you make a lot of statements there. I've never come across them before in all the fifty years that I've been associated with the witnesses. You've never um, come across what? I know, you've just spun you've just spun those stories up. You've um, sorry, you've never come across what? Uh, all of the stuff that you were saying about the UN and whatever the other charity was that you said that they was getting money from and all that. I've never come across all of that. I'm pretty sure if it was that that uh, available in the public realm, there would have been more than one person other than yourself that has. Uh, raise that um there are other people who've spoken to jehovah's witnesses about this usually beside the cart there are quite a lot of videos where people have um done what's called cart crashing where they speak to jehovah's witnesses beside their carts mostly in america but of course the carts have been off the road as we know for about the last two and a half years um all right you say that you believe in the bible and you're here yeah. to defend the bible what about the claim in the Watchtower of the 1st of September, 1988, page 13, paragraph 2, that Jesus is the former angelic brother of Lucifer? Satan, the devil, used to be Jesus' brother. I'll read it. Obviously, yeah, Jesus... I know, I know where you're coming from, India. Obviously, Jesus, and, a perfect and, man... And, did... and Satan, before he became Satan, was an angel. We know that. It's pretty clear in the Bible. It states that quite clearly. Um, well, Satan is still an angel now, but your your book, your watchtower, says obviously Jesus, a perfect man, did not imagine these encounters. He was confronted by the same one who was the power behind the serpent in Eden, his own former angelic brother, who ages before had rebelled, and now was out to thwart the fulfilment of Genesis three five. Satan wanted to break the integrity of the promised seed. It says that um, Lucifer is the former angelic brother of Jesus. That sir is blasphemy. That's, that that's what high-level Freemasonry teaches. No, that's what Luciferianism nonsense. teaches, that Jesus that's and not, Lucifer no, no, were, no. were brothers. Yeah, well, they were, weren't they? They were both angels in heaven. That's what Luciferians teach, right? Yeah. And that's, no, that's, the, that's what the Bible teaches. Where? Where? Show me where Jesus is the brother of Lucifer, please. Please show if me that. Were, but if they were all angels created at the same time, then they're brothers, aren't they? Jesus is not an angel, sir. I can prove yes, that from is. Hebrews he 1.5. Verse five. Of, verse born of all creation. That doesn't mean that Jesus is an angel. The word there is prototokos it, in Colossians 1.15. You're taking that verse out of context the, and you're reading something of a verse that's angel. not in Colossians 1.15. He 1 is 15. the guardian angel. Sorry? He is the guardian angel. I'm sorry. Who is the guardian angel? I thought Jesus it was Catholics the that believed in guardian angels, not Jehovah's Witnesses. 
Uh, I think this conversation is ended. Well, you don't know Jehovah's Witness doctrine, do you? I wanted to quote Hebrews 1.5, which proves that Jesus is, he's hung up. So I'll quote Hebrews 1.5 to prove that Jesus is not an angel. For to which of the angels did he ever say, quoting Psalm 2, you are my son, today I have begotten you. So that proves that Jesus Christ is not an angel because it, it's, it's a reference to the son. It's a, mess, it's a messianic psalm, Psalm 2, that is the Christ who's pro prophesied as becoming king, not an angel.